if you've tried dragging and dropping, say, a PDF onto a PowerPoint slide, it probably didn't work. Unless you wanted the first page or if it was a one-page PDF, then it might work. But let's say you have a 62-page PDF and you want to get page 45 onto a slide. How do you do that? That's what we're going to talk about today. The way to think about it and kind of the way to kind of remember why PDFs don't really work, and in that sense, this title to this video, I guess, is a little bit clickbait. But the reason why it works is because PowerPoint really likes two things. PowerPoint likes pictures and PowerPoint likes shapes. PDFs, uh, portable document format files, uh, are not pictures or shapes. So what you have to do is you got to convert your PDF into pictures. And so I put together a quick little uh, demonstrative to kind of show you kind of what the workflow is. So you might have a PDF example I want to use today. Let's say it's 62 pages long. So you've got one file that has 62 pages in it. What you need to do is you need to convert it, that one file of 62 pages, to 62 files of 62 pages or one file per page. And the way that you can do that is using Adobe Acrobat. You're going to need a version that's not the free version. Um, so I have Adobe Acrobat DC. Um, before they had kind of the subscription model, uh, versions of Acrobat Standard and Grader uh, had this capability. All you do is you open it up, save it to JPEG or TIFF, uh, and then you have what you need. And then from there, you can take the one page that you want and put that uh, onto a slide. So let's get started. Let's go to my desktop. I've just created a folder that has just the uh, PDF in it, and let's open it up. Um, I'm using my Mac today, and by default, the, my Mac is set to open up PDFs in the Preview app. I'm going to go ahead and close that because that's not what I want. So instead, I'm going to right-click or two-finger tap, and I'm going to open it with Adobe Acrobat. I have Adobe Acrobat DC. That gives me all the functionality that I want. So let's get this up a little bit bigger. I just looked up. I did a Google search. I always want to try to find like kind of public documents for these kinds of exercises um, because I don't want to use anything that's potentially client confidential for my actual cases that I've worked on. So I just did a Google search for client uh, condo declarations. So I found this PDF. It's 62 pages long. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to file, save it as, and remember PowerPoint like shapes or pictures. So let's save it as pictures. I want to make sure it's in that. Power, PDFs and PowerPoint, I'll put it in that folder. And the format that I want to choose is going to be JPEG. And then hit save. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the 62 pages of PDFs that are in one file and again create the 62 pages. And now I can see that I have, uh, it gives me the PDF file name, underscore page, underscore, and however many pages it is. So I have now 62 files, I still have the original PDF in there. So usually what I'm, I'm making PowerPoint, I usually have like a PowerPoint folder and I make a PowerPoint folder for every kind of demonstrative that I'm doing, whether it's opening, closing, direct exam of witness A, B, or C. And then I put all the copies of all the PDF exhibits in there and then all the um, pictures that I create in there too. So that way it just doesn't clog up kind of like an exhibits folder or anything like that. It stays nice and sequestered. There's gonna be a lot of files that you create that you won't use, that they'll just be there. Um, Yes, you can go through and just kind of convert one page at a time as you need it. But I generally find if you're going to use the exhibit, just convert the whole thing. Uh, that way, if you need multiple pages from the exhibit, you're not doing this process multiple times. So now that I have all the picture files that I need, let's go ahead and open up PowerPoint. I'm going to start with a blank presentation. There, from what I'll do is I always delete kind of all the pre-populated things that uh, PowerPoint's trying to give me. And then my favorite background color right now is kind of this second gray. One, two, hit that and apply to all. So now I'm ready. So this is kind of the background that I use for most uh, PowerPoints that I'm working on. Um, now I can go to my insert ribbon. Well, let me just show you something real quick as kind of an experiment. So if I try and take, I've got this PowerPoint, uh, I got this PDF file. If I just try to drag it onto my PowerPoint slide, it only gives me this weird kind of first page. So I can only look at page one. But now that I have all these individual pages, let's say on slide one, I want to talk about, and I can just drag and drop it. And that's, I'll show you that's one way to do it. You get to add it in there, right? So now I've got the page already on there. Now I can talk about, this is page one of the condo declaration. And let's create a, a new, insert a new slide. We'll insert a blank slide. Right? And on the second slide, we'll insert it the other way that you can do it. We'll go to the insert ribbon, insert a picture from file, 
And now I have to just navigate to where I've saved it on my Mac. Save it in a folder on the desktop. And let's go to page 45. Right, so let's say I want page 45. Now I've got page 45. And now I can show, like if I'm looking at my slideshow, I can say, let's hit Command Enter to start the slideshow from the current slide. Now I've got it, and we can look at it here. So we've got slide one, we could talk about, this is the condo declaration that you're gonna hear a lot about during this trial. Go to the next slide. Page 45 is the one that's really important. That's what we're talking about in this case, and you can go on from there. Now what I usually do when I make a PowerPoint is, I don't just leave it kind of like this. I, leave, I make it bigger so that they, um, you can, the jurors can read what's going on. And so I'll make a call out. So on the next slide, I'll just take slide two and I'll command D and duplicate it or control D and duplicate it. And I'll make a call out. And so on the call out, what I'll have is, I'll take the regular document, command D. So now I have two copies of the document. And now let's crop it down to say, um, section three, the notice of meetings, right? So I'm gonna go to the fit picture format ribbon. And now I'm going to trim this down using the crop tool down to notice of meetings. All right. Then I'll move it all the way to the corner. So you're getting kind of two lessons today. Um, you're getting not only the um, how to put documents in your PowerPoint, but you're also getting a call out. A little mini lesson. All right, so now I've got that. Something that I always like to do on all my call outs is um, I like to put a little bit of a border around it very thin and also a little bit of a drop shadow just to create some definition between the kind of the two two sides right and then the last thing I'll do is I'll animate this to pop out and for that I will use a faded zoom Go to animations and let's use a zoom so I got that and for this one because of the way I've set up slides two and three I'll just set this to go after previous. So that way it just pops up as soon as I get to slide three. All right. So now let's look at this slideshow. Go to slide one. Let's take a look. So we've got the first slide. We're going to talk about the we're going to talk about the condo declarations in this case. Then slide two, page 45 is the one that's really of interest to us. Uh, what's interesting there is section three. We're going to talk about the notice of meetings, and that's what was deficient in this case, and that's what this case is about. Because of the way that I've done it, this is as clear as I can make this call out because I'm using an actual picture file from the original PDF. Um, if, and I noticed that it's a little bit grainy, but that's because the original PDF that I have is grainy, just kind of the luck of the draw in terms of this random PDF that I downloaded. If I were to go and use the camera tool um, in uh, Adobe Acrobat, I might be able to get an image that, this, that is this clear. A lot of times when you make it bigger to try and fit your entire slide, that process makes it look extra pixelated and extra grainy. So that's the way that I would recommend getting your PDFs into PowerPoint is by converting them from the PDF format to a picture format, whether that's TIFF or JPEG. Adobe Acrobat's not the only way you can do it if you don't want to go, out, go ahead and buy um, the Acrobat DC uh, or you don't want to subscribe to that. Other software that's out there can do, serve the same function. I believe Cute PDF can do that it is another one that can uh, convert PDFs to picture files like JPEGs or TIFFs. I do think that's a paid uh, piece of software as well, so you're not going to be able to do that for free. Um, but if the, again, if this is something that you're doing a lot, you're going to want to have a dedicated tool that can convert your PDFs to picture files for you. If you have any questions on that, like the callouts, converting the PDFs to JPEGs or anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd love to talk to you guys down there.